nothing great can be built by yourself at all i mean that that's the thing i i don't care what they're what it is building yeah 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 it, whatever you're building you if you want it to be what god desires it to be there's a zero percent chance you can do it all by yourself absolutely you you will not build anything great by yourself what's up everybody Welcome back to The Leader's Cut. You obviously see one of our favorite people on planet Earth. One of mine, one of yours, my best friend, Timmy Ross. I love you. I love, I do love how people in my DMs are referring to you by Timmy these days. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for me, it's Prez. That's it's P-R-E-Z. Well, well, the only person who calls me P-R-E-Z is you. And now I get a lot of DMs that well, are like, Prez. So, it, it, it comes from affection, so it is I have to deal with it. It's a term of endearment. I won't be mad if y'all if, if I see y'all in the streets and you say Timmy, I won't be mad. <laughs> I promise I won't. Well, we are going to have a fun discussion today uh, talking about something that we uh, feel really strongly about for you. Every single one of you is building something. Mm -hmm. You may be building a family. You may be building uh, a department. You may be building a ministry. You may be building a business. You may be building a product. You may be building a church. You may be building a marriage. You're building something and most likely several somethings. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're really passionate about is building God's way. So we're going to give you some of the things that we've spent the last 30-ish, 25 to 30 years learning Let's pray before we jump in and get cut all over. Yeah. Spirit of the living God, thank you. Thank you for being so gentle with us. Yes, Lord. You're firm, but sensitive and sweet. You don't yell and scream, mm. but you do convict. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, I pray that if there is any area in our lives demanding a measure of conviction from us. Holy Spirit, I pray we'd feel it during yes, this time Lord. together. Yes, Lord. I, I don't want to walk one step further in the wrong direction. So mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, first, would you convict us mm -hmm. if we are moving in any manner that is not pleasing to you, whether it's by direction or by the way we're walking it out? Holy Spirit, we tell you right now, you're the one with all wisdom, not mm -hmm. us. That's right. And so we yield ourselves to you. Would you cut on us? Anywhere our flesh is getting out of control, cut on us and replace that space with more of your spirit. Spirit of the living God, would you take over this time and do whatever you want with it in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. All well, right. So with that the, prayer, <laughs> let's get it. The, the premise of this, we've kind of talked about this for years. Uh, Matthew 10 um, Matthew 11, Matthew 10, Jesus saying, uh, listen, I want you to be as innocent as doves, mm -hmm. but I want you to be as shrewd as serpents. Right. Okay. So that then in the next chapter, Jesus talks about the way that the kingdom is being violently attacked and the violent take hold of it by force. Right. So we've kind of put those two passages together mm -hmm. over the years to come to this place where we arrived and we call it, we don't fight fair at all. So when we put Matthew 10 <laughs> and Matthew 11 together, we just, the simple men's way to describe it is we are on assignment. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against nope. powers and principalities in this unseen realm. Right. And the way we fight, yeah. we don't fight fair at all. So from your vantage point, mm -hmm. why don't you describe mm -hmm. how, what, what that looks like? So um, I don't know why this, this scripture popped in my head, but I think it's worth noting that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, right? This is the fight that angels fought. They didn't even fight fair, yep. <laughs> right? They knew we can't go head up against this enemy without his blood. So they're setting precedent for us not fighting Facts. fair. And so what that looks like for... um every season of my life and your life is I am looking for opportunities and ways that I can literally not be fair in how I'm approaching fulfilling God's will in my life. Yep. Whether that's personally being humble, 
crucifying my flesh or setting aside something that I have a strong desire for, or if it's within a team or an organization saying, I'm getting somebody in here that's better than me, smarter than me, uh, can preach better than me, can, can administrate better than me, and, and literally step back so that we can actually win the game yeah. as opposed to being James Harden. Right. And I'm going to, 33 dribbles later, step back three. While four other people... <laughs> have positioned and repositioned themselves and probably been open three or four times. I just want to break down my defender and score a point. So I'm, I'm, that's my, that's my heart. And that's the way I've, I've approached every single season. Okay. So we, we, we have to uh, disclose this, that the way we're wired, our bent is uh, if we have to choose between winning the award and winning the title, We'll never win an award. We we went. We didn't go anti award. We just no. went. Awards don't matter it, to us. They don't. Championships do. Chips do. Absolutely okay. correct. We Absolutely. want the chip. That's right. So uh, as we step into this conversation, one of your favorite things and one of mine, we're not afraid to go after people who are better than us. And so why don't you talk about one of the ways I've watched you, and I'm watching you right now, and what you're building. Mm -hmm. You, you don't fight fair because you are not afraid to go after people who are even more dominant than you in certain areas. So I got I to gotta give you the story that set this up because there's a story, right? Um, when I was a young adult pastor at, at the Potter's House, um, I, you know, Potter's House uh, culture was very all in, right? So I don't think I had a guest speaker like the first 24 to 30 months. Wow. Like I did every Friday. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was my first time taking a Friday off. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a Friday off. Um, somebody had given me a CD of a guy named Robert Madu. And so I listened to the CD. I'm like, this dude's dope. And so... This weekend that I was off, I'm like, I'm going to have him speak. So uh, I'll never forget where I was, Prez. I was playing uh, night golf with Juliet, uh, like putt-putt, like the night golf. I was putt -putt. about to say, you've been holding out on me if you're playing. <laughs> 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 night okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. were playing putt-putt golf uh, at night with the little, you know, iridescent balls and all this kind of stuff, uh, golf balls at the at uh, the Grapevine Mills Mall. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And Robert Madu sp spoke that night. I didn't even think about brick or anything. The next Friday, I come back. I walk in. I'm walking down uh, to the sanctuary. And this girl runs up to me and she goes, oh my God, PT, Robert Madu crushed. Oh, he was so good. And then she said, yo, if you're going to bring people like him, you could have stayed gone. And bro, my heart shattered. Like I felt this feeling in my heart I had never felt before ever mm -hmm. in my life. And it lingered for like three days. And so every morning I woke up for three days, I just kept feeling this like that thing stung me. And I don't like feeling this way. I'm like, Lord, I'm not jealous of Robert. I'm the one that chose him to come here. Like, what is the deal? And the Holy Spirit said to me, if people like Robert are a problem for you, I'll never bring anyone like Robert into your life again. But if you're okay with people like Robert being better than you and them praising him, even at the expense of you, I'll entrust you with people like Robert for the rest of your life. And from that day to this day, I, and I've told Robert this story, God used Robert Madu. So great. For me to pass the heart test. Wow. As to not be jealous, not have comparison, and not to compete. And from that day to this day, God has always trusted me with people like Robert Madu to be in relationship with and I can join with them 
and do great things for the kingdom of God. Because at the end of the day, I just want to move the needle in advancing his kingdom. I don't need the credit. I don't need any individual awards. Nothing great can be built by yourself. At all? I mean, that that's the thing. I, I don't care what they're what it is. building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, whatever you're building, you if you want it to be what God desires it to be, there's a 0% chance you can do it all by yourself. Absolutely. You, you will not build anything great by yourself. Noah didn't build the ark by himself. Didn't. Think about all of the people. Uh, Peter didn't build the ecclesia by himself. Didn't. Paul didn't write the New Testament by himself. Didn't. <laughs> Moses didn't build the people of God by himself. I, I'm, Timmy, nobody does anything great by themselves. That's right. Solomon didn't build the temple That's right. by himself. That's right. It takes a team of great That's people. That's absolutely correct. But in order to be on a great team, you got to walk in the humility. Absolutely correct. Required. That's right. Where good players want to play in your team. That's absolutely correct. I, I don't want to be in a situation where I need the accolades. Right. I really right. don't. Yeah. That's, I, I, I lived that way for a season yep. in my early 20s. Yep. It's a lot of stress. Yes, it is. It's too much. It's and tiring. it's a lot more work. I'm just going to be honest. Absolutely correct. I, I, you got to do it all by yourself. Right. And Too much. It, it's way too much. Yeah. But I also don't want to just be on any team. Mm. I want to be on a great team. Me too. So getting comfortable with gifted and anointed people that's is right. essential that's right to you being able to build what god put you on this earth to build absolutely you've got to be comfortable yeah. in your own skin absolutely correct and you're as good at that as anybody and and both of us are in a situation right now yep. where we're going after people yep talking about paying them more than we get paid <laughs> uh, yes we are <laughs> yes we are because it, it that's it's that's not what it takes that's sometimes that's what it takes and again we're not just about the accolades. It isn't about the money. No, it's not. It, it's like, I want to win. I want to win. And, and there is And I want to run up the score, if, bro. Be, oh, I, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want to run up the score. I don't want to barely win. Yeah, no, me either. God no. doesn't do buzzer beaters. Yeah, absolutely correct. He only does blowouts. Absolutely correct. That, mm, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, He's please. never done a buzzer beater yeah. in the history of ever. That, that's nasty. Nor will bro. he ever. That's nasty. He bro. only does blowouts. Okay, press. But Timmy, if I'm doing everything by myself, I'm probably not going to win. Facts. And if I'm too insecure to play in a great team, right. we're probably not going to win a chip. So right. what do you, what, so you have the Robert moment. Yep. Okay. Then you come all the way to where you are today, yep. where you're surrounded by uber talented people. Absolutely correct. Okay. Yep. Does it ever flare up? Nope. Okay. How have you kept it dead this whole time? Um, my memory ain't short. And I say that a lot as it relates to a lot of different things. But when I tell you, Preston Morrison, my memory ain't short. That feeling I had with Robert Madu, <laughs> I did not want to have that feeling again. <laughs> I just didn't. Yeah. So that, that thing lingered for three days and it, 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 it was a sick feeling. I didn't like it. Cause, and I never experienced it before. I'm like, I don't, I'm not jealous of nobody. You know, you know what I mean? I love what I do and always, but, but God used that moment to be like, heart check. You get to choose. And, and, and let me tell you, Prez, there's countless people that have chosen to keep people on their team that will never surpass them. Yeah, That's how you get a pastor that can pastor a church for 60 years. Well, if you keep everyone else that can speak <laughs> four levels before you, right. then you never have a threat of a successor. Right. <laughs> you never even have to worry about, I think my season's coming to an end. The tide is shifting. He's won the heart of the people. They're listening to him more than they listen to me. The, indi the, the natural indications, if you've really discipled well, of when it's time to go to the next level are stripped away when you choose to keep anointed people at bay. Mm. And I just chose, no, I'm going to always have great people around me and they may be my indication of when it's time for me to leave. Because <laughs> if they grow to a certain level, it may be time for me to move out the way. Um, uh, 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 God gave, as you know, because I shared this with you years ago, but God gave me a... Um, uh, a revelation of transition 
in my 20s. I felt like it was premature. I don't understand why he gave it to me. I'm like, give it to somebody older. They ain't going to listen to me. And it was about how to transition out of leadership and how to transition out of ministry. And it was that Jesus was on the cross and he told his disciples, not on the cross, but he told his disciples, greater work shall you do because I'm going to leave, right? Then on the cross, he gives up the ghost. No man can take my life, I lay it down. Mm -hmm. So nobody took his life. <laughs> he laid it down and then he gave up the ghost. Those are two different things, right? So, and then he breathed his last, right? So, so I knew that when it came time for transition, no one was going to be able to tell me when to leave. Outside of immorality and illegality, no one can tell me when to leave. Mm -hmm. No man can take my life, I lay it down. Outside of illegality and immorality, no man can take my life, I lay it down. But once I made that decision, I have to give up the post. In the same way he gave up the ghost, I have to give up the post. And here's what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, Tim, do you know what would have happened to the disciples if Jesus wouldn't have left? I said, of course I don't. Why would you even ask me? <laughs> like, I don't, don't ask me questions you know I don't know the answer to. He said, if Jesus wouldn't have departed and ascended, he would have trapped apostles in disciples' bodies. Because their next level of leadership could not come out till he got out uh, of Dodge. Uh, Who wants to hear Peter preach if Jesus is standing there? Oh, oh God. Press, how many lead pastors have become the arbitrators of when their successor is ready? He needs more time. You know, I'm still working with him on his sermon. No, if God's already spoken and said, this is the guy, you know what happened when God told Moses, your time is done, anoint Joshua. Well, give me another year with him. I want to make sure he's prepared. No, fam, come up, to, come, come up on this mountain and I hope you said bye to everybody because you're not coming back down. I'm going to bury you myself. I'll bury you myself. <laughs> but I say when he's ready, not you. Jesus didn't just step back. That, that's what all the lead path. I'm going to step back and give him. He left. He, lit, he got on a cloud <laughs> and he ascended. We, we are quick to talk about the resurrection, but we don't even mess with ascension. I just think it's like, you know what? The whole virgin birth is too much for people <laughs> and, and resurrection is too much for people. Let's not even talk about that cloud and that ascension. He got on a, he got on a cloud and he ascended before Peter's trial sermon. 3,000 people get saved. Jesus is nowhere around. He leaves. Because if he's still there, who wants to hear Peter preach? You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. I have never thought about that before. You're, you're a billion percent right. No, no one. No one. If they're setting up shop in the same town, ain't nobody nope. coming to listen to I, Peter. I promise you. But absent, they are forced to look for the next man up. Ooh. And I really believe that, that, that most of our unsuccessful Attempts is because we won't get out of the way. Yeesh. So whether that's backing up and, and delegating authority to somebody else now. Okay, you were the, you planted the church and you had to counsel and you had to lead the prayer meeting and you had to, and you had to, I understand that in the first six months. It's been three years. You still doing everything? You doing hospital visits and you doing prayer? And Well, they need to see me. I bet you they don't. I bet you they don't need you there. My final year as the lead pastor of Embassy City, I was there six months out of 12 in my final year. <laughs> so God was already turning the hearts of the people before I was even gone. Right. So in order to be successful, you have to be willing to back up. It is Paul coming in, planning a church and then going, you get over here. Yep. Timothy, go to Ephesus. Titus, go to Crete. God, I ain't going to be there. <laughs> like, you can't be apostolic and be there. It's not going to happen. So, anyway. <laughs> Clinic. <laughs> Clinic. The, the, Jesus is the greatest leader who ever lived. Period. There, Point there's blank. no denying no it. No denying it. He, he wasn't just a great teacher. He right. wasn't just 
the just, the son of, he was a, f- the best leader he was. earth has ever known. Absolutely correct. He, Absolutely his whole life correct. is a cheat code. Absolutely correct. And it's a blueprint. And that brings us to the next thing that yep. I think is important. If uh, we're really going to try and build it, build something, whatever it is, uh, according to what God desires, we got to talk a lot about it. Yep. Cast yes, vision. Do. Ad nauseum. We got we to gotta puke yep. vision. Uh-huh. One of the things that I, I know you've said is Jesus was a master repeater. That's, that's exactly what he was. One of my mentors says, uh, if you don't repeat something so much that the people roll their eyes when they hear you say it, you haven't said it enough. Here's, here's my uh, cosign. When you start the f- sentence and they can finish it, that's when it becomes culture. Yep. I'll never forget um, uh, when my boys uh, would be walking around and th- they go to the half bath, guest bath. And I would, as they walk there, I would say, make sure the seat is up. Midstream, I would say, <laughs> is the seat up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the seat is up. Oh, I forgot to put the seat up. I'm like, put the seat up. So every single time they went to the restroom, make sure the seat is up, make sure the seat is up, make sure the seat is up. You know when I knew they knew it? When they started walking to the bathroom and would say, I'm putting the seat up, or they would be peeing midstream and say, the seat is up. (laughs) That's when it's culture. Right. Until then, you haven't said it enough. So upset the world, upset the world, upset the world. What is upset the world? We, 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 want to turn, we want to turn the world upside down with the message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. Until you can finish this sentence, you don't you know. Heard it. It enough. You haven't heard it enough. Nope. If you got to stop, if you got to pull it up on your phone, you haven't heard it enough. And so it must be repeated or it will be deleted. Hey. And I think too many times we as communicators, we get, we get prideful in our communication. I can't believe I have to tell you guys this again. Mm. We're so used to talking that we actually think that we're understood. Speaking and being understood are two totally Totally different different things. things. (laughs) If you don't believe me, ask your spouse. (laughs) How many times have you said something and thought you communicated clear? Yep. No. And they let you know. You have triggered me mm-hmm. or you just came at me sideways. I don't like the way you said that. And I'm like, I th- I'm a genius communicator. Every time I go speak, I get introduced <laughs> as an international communicator. I am a master communicator. I'm a wonderful. Everyone but you knows that. How are my employees not understanding what I say when I can go to Singapore and be readily understood? And that's their third language. No, that's pride. It's great. You 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 drank your own Kool Aid. You thought you were your bio. Your bio says something about you. It doesn't say it is you. (laughs) So we have to be patient with our spouses, with our children, with our employees, with our vision. You must say it over and over. Go count between Matthew and John. How many times Jesus is talking about the son of man must die, the, the son of man must die, to the point that when he got ready to do it, he had to say, how long do I have to be with y'all? <laughs> how many times have you heard this already? Yep. And this is the word wrapped in flesh. This is Logos, mm-hmm. right? This is the word wrapped in flesh. This is Emmanuel. And he had to repeat himself. And we think we don't. So nah, we, we must repeat. It's fascinating to me. Write the vision down so that they that read it may run with it. Why must it be written down? Because if you don't write down the vision, and I don't believe that's just literal, but if you don't write it down, when it's re-spoken, it will be like the telephone game. You're absolutely right. That's exactly right. That's why it has to be written down. That's exactly right. That's why it has to be repeated verbatim. How do we upset the world? That's, we have to say it verbatim. verbatim. Every single time. Every yep. single time. Yep. Otherwise, yep. it's going to be the telephone game and someone's going to spin it according to how they see it. And then we're, we're going to be three generations away as a family 
And we go from being a generous family in my generation to my grandchildren's generation. We're, we're thieves. That's right. That's exactly because right. Because along the way, That's right. if it wasn't written down That's and it exactly wasn't right. recited verbatim, yeah. somebody else is going to twist it and That's do right. it a different way. That's exactly right. I, I, I used to correct people when it came to upset the world that would say, we, up, we, we, we are turning the world uh, upside down with his hope, his message, and his love. And I was like, that's not the order. <laughs> verbatim is verbatim. Message, love, hope. <laughs> Say it in the correct order. It's the message, it's the love, and it's the hope. Like, like and if you're not that diligent with it, right. that's when it can turn into the elephant game. Then it's like, yeah, you know, upset the world. Yeah, we're just about, you know, agitating people so that they can be like disrupted and something else Tim said. No. <laughs> right. That's not it. That's not it. So even if you get close, it has to be verbatim. And if, if, even if it's out of order, be diligent and be picky about it because it matters. It absolutely matters. Matters. How we say it affects how we live it mm. and so if we just pick and choose and some days we emphasize other parts rather than all the parts we're going to live it differently than he commanded it to be lived out it doesn't change it is what it is it is what it this is this is what god asked for this is what he said and this is how we do it that's exactly right yeah i want it etched on my heart that's right I, I, if, if God births a vision in me and for me, I want it to be so easy to receive yeah. that you do finish the sentence. Yes. You, you finish that sentence. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Here's why. Because if you'll finish the sentence, you're more likely to carry the burden. If, if our children can't finish the sentence, Timothy. Don't say my whole name. Stop playing with me. Just say what you're saying. You ain't got to say my whole name. They won't carry it. <laughs> when you get like this. Nathan, Noah, Tyler, yeah. and Press won't carry it. Riley won't carry it. Timmy, how, if, if we don't carry such a burden that we feel like Paul, if I didn't do it, it would be like fire yes. in my bones. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus constantly repeating himself. That's exactly right. This is the model. It is. It absolutely is. Dr. Hayford used to say he'd have to say something seven times in a series before he even thought someone would remember what he said. <laughs> You're like, okay. Yeah. That's, no one's going to catch anything on the first time. That's exactly right. They're not going to catch it on the second That's time. That's exactly right. You're not condescending by repeating yourself. Thank you. But you're condescending if you don't. I mean, you said Timothy, so I'm just. What the what? <laughs> you are not condescending if you repeat yourself, but you're only condescending if you don't. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i love your face off. oh my goodness i love your oh back. goodness <laughs> what are some of the other things that we <laughs> well if we talk about um the basement first um God was very, very clear that this was a place to hold space for people to give us the gift of their vulnerability. And so vulnerability has become the tagline, and we say it ad nauseum, vulnerability is our superpower. Press B, get down here, we're dwellers. You cannot build community without having familiar idioms. Common language is culture. It's absolutely correct. Common language is how you build common unity. Mm -hmm. That's where we get communities Community. from. Because why? We're saying the same great. thing. 
And so, um, uh, you know, um, Welcome to the Basement, um, a book that I wrote will come out February the 27th of 2024. The language is so potent that I can't even talk regular without the language and the idioms coming up. So I, I, I said, uh, I want this to be a New York Times bestseller. And then I'm like, no, I don't. I want it to be a New York Times best dweller. The community gave me that language. Yep. I didn't name our community the dwellers. They named themselves. And I listened to them. Yeah, it's great. The, the, the dwelling became synonymous with the basement. And so you repeat that language to reinforce the culture so that others know when you come, this is how you have to talk. Yep. If you don't use this language, it's the difference between Sibboleth and Sibboleth. That's what happens when you read the Bible. I'm going <laughs> to uh, continue on. But. So, so we, so, so we want language that becomes familiar and repeatable and digestible and people can, it becomes part of common unity. This is the language we use when we're here. And if you don't use this language, then you're probably not from here. Right. You're probably just visiting. Yep. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that I've seen you do, uh, anytime I've ever seen you build anything, generosity has always played a major role Big in time. anything I've ever seen you Big time. Absolutely build. correct. Absolutely correct. To where I, I have, you know, running between running with Robert and running with you, probably two of the most generous people I've, I will ever be around in my life. Uh, it became who I was. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the role from your vantage point with what, what you're building now. Why generosity? Why is that something that is a non-negotiable for you? Yeah, because um, in the kingdom, uh, you don't, give to get, you get to give, right? So everything God has given me is his, and it happens to be in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have any money that I think is mine. And then some of it's his. Like some people, when they're neophytes in the faith, right? They're like, I have to return to the Lord the tithe. And the rest is mine. Right. I don't see it that way. It's all his. Yeah. And he lets me keep some of it. Right. To steward. But he can ask. For, he can ask for the 90 anytime he wants to. Right. He can ask for the 80 the anytime. The Lord's the, and the fullness thereof. Bro, everything in my bank account is his. Right. He just lets me keep. He lets me hold some of it. Right. And I'll pay my bills with that and take care of my household expenses with that. And then I'm like, what you want to do with the rest? And he's like, I want you to pay for them groceries. I want you to help that dude get a house. I want you to help float this dude while he. Or recovers from his surgery. And these are, I didn't, I didn't make those up just now. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is my life. Right. And so, um, when you're building common unity, you allow other people in on that level of generosity and you let them know you don't have to wait until you're a millionaire to be a blessing. Yep. You get to be a blessing right where you are. So, whereas one person can buy somebody a car and another person might be able to extravagantly buy somebody a house you may be able to pi buy somebody's coffee behind you. It's great. You may be able to take care of the next three orders at Chick-fil-A, right? It, it, you, you may be able to just give somebody a ride home. It doesn't even have to be monetary. You know, you, know, yep. you might be able to invite somebody over for dinner that you know is struggling and they made it through breakfast and lunch, but they're coming over your house for dinner. Uh, Marcin and Marlene were that to me when I first moved mm. to uh, uh, Texas. I, I would, uh, they had a thing called the King's Table at Potter's House uh, after services on Wednesday nights. And I didn't have enough money for groceries to stretch all week. Uh, well, I had enough money for groceries, but every time I went in that refrigerator, I re realized payday is longer than <laughs> what's in this. So I'm like, any meal I can get on somebody else's dime or generosity, I will do it. So Sundays I was with uh, Marlene and Marcine. And then on Wednesdays, uh, I think the, 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 the fish plates were like five bucks. I didn't have it. So I would go up there and I'd be like, and they would be like, boy, get in line. We ain't going to turn you away. I hate catfish. <laughs> I ate it. 
I ate it till I didn't have to no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because a full belly don't know the difference between filet mignon <laughs> and a double deck Facts. of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with some oatmeal. Full is right? full. Full is full, right? So generosity to me is just helping people understand. Um, and we, and we again, when you can teach it to somebody and they start doing it, it goes on autopilot because it is addicting, especially the reaction that you get when, when you give somebody generosity. Case in point, last week, um, Juliet is, is making vegan mac and cheese for the boys. Uh, this is Thanksgiving morning. And so I run, I run out to Sprouts. Um, I get the ingredients that she needs. The lady behind me has like prosciutto, maybe two bottles of wine and like some cheese. And um, I paid for my stuff and I mouthed to the uh, uh, clerk, uh, pay for hers too. So they start scanning it and she goes, oh, like, oh, no, 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 that, that's my stuff. And I went, hey, I'm about to pay for that and you're going to have to deal with it. And she goes, oh my God, like, thank you. Immediately outstretched arms to give me a hug. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, it's so sweet. Like, I, I've just done like the full court press to get everything for Thanksgiving dinner. And like, this was kind of like the treat at the end that we wanted to have. And thank you so much. It just means so much that you would do that. But the, her response was like, I paid for her mortgage for right, the month. Right. That's how overwhelming generosity is. It doesn't take much. Um, and when you get people, when you introduce people to it and they start doing it, it gets addicting fast. And it is my path. Like I, I now have to ask the Holy Spirit, are you like, do you want me to do this or is it just me? Because I just do it so automatically right, now right. that sometimes the Holy Spirit has to be like, hey, bro, just pay for your bread and go home. Like, <laughs> this doesn't have to be this moment right now. You, 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 but, but it's my lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Generosity is an act, not an amount. That's why it hit her the way that it, it did. Because it's not about how much. Sure, sometimes the amount does have right. a greater impact. Yeah, for sure. But generosity, to, act, to your point, it That's, may be a coffee. It yeah. may be a ride. That's it right. doesn't have to be uh, monetarily extravagant right. because generosity with a pure heart is always extravagant. That's exactly right. No matter the amount. That's exactly right. But when we talk about building something and, and bringing in team, people want to be around a generous person. Facts. Because the statement generosity makes, every time you're generous in front of your team, okay? So say you guys are having a meeting at a, a cafe or at a restaurant. I don't know how many times I've seen you buy the, the meals of the people at the table next. Your team has seen it mm -hmm. multiple times mm -hmm. a month. Absolutely. Everybody wants to be on the team of somebody who's generous. Because right. one of the statements generosity makes is, I'm not here for me. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. If I were here for me, I'd be a hoarder. But every time I give, when I give to you, I'm making a statement. Absolutely correct. You're valuable to me. Absolutely correct. But when I hold on to everything, the statement I'm making to everyone around me is, I'm more valuable to me than you are to All me. All right. So I'm glad you went here. I, I did, had no idea uh, you were going to go here this specifically. But um, this past summer, uh, I was off for the whole month of July. Mm -hmm. Um, and I went to Australia. I took the whole- It was insanity. I took yes, my family, and then I took my whole staff. Yes, you did. I brought them in. I brought my production staff in for two weeks, and then they left, and then I brought my administrative staff in for two weeks. And um, they had never been to Australia before, so they got to just, we did not produce one. We didn't do a yeah, the whole basement Australia. They were paid. We were off. And then paid to be on vacation. <laughs> And the vacation was paid for. Off. Yes. Double off. I'm aware. Triple of off. You quadruple off, up. right? Yes. So, so um, I've never been in a position financially to ever mm. do something like that. But I wanted to make a statement to their value. And generosity allows you to do this. And again, you can do this on any scale. Um, along with that, wherever we, if, if we ever have to fly to do production elsewhere, like I'm doing a, a show in Newark, New Jersey with Chris Broussard uh, from FS1. My whole team flies with me first class because here's what I'm telling them by us all f flying first class. You don't work for me. You work with me. Mm. 
This is literally how Jesus equals the playing field by giving them his authority and saying, go do what you've seen me do. I want you to know you're not just for me. You're with me. So you're going to be able to do the same thing I do. And when I leave, you'll do greater yep. than I did. And so that's extravagant generosity. And when, you, when, when people are exposed to it, if they don't turn into that type of person, it's selfishness and amnesia on a level that is mind-boggling to me. The person that can receive that and turn around and be like, yeah, I'm the man and you're just for me and I'm up here and you're down there. I'm in first class. Yeah, my production team is down there in 22 E, D, and F. Nah, fam, we're all in first class because you don't work for me, you work with me. And if you take that for granted, right. you'll work without me. Yeah. With someone else. <laughs> if, uh, again, coming back to culture, if they're not generous the way you're generous, how can two walk together unless they be Absol in agreement? Absolutely agree. And so if you take for granted my generosity. That's right. It's not just a me thing. You're right. actually making the statement. If you take for granted my generosity, you're actually communicating you're not generous. That's absolutely correct. Because someone who's generous always, always. notices the generosity of someone else. Absolutely correct. Every time. Every single time. Because we know how much generosity costs. That's right. We, we don't sit around counting and make no. big No, but we know yeah. generosity is sacrificial. Yeah. But somebody who takes for granted the generosity of another typically doesn't sacrifice for much absolutely and is correct. rarely generous. Absolutely correct. Two, two very practical things about generosity that I think are great to remember. If you want to build something where the people that run with you, whether it's your kids, whether it's your spouse, whether it's coworkers, um, two things to think about. One, one massive element of generosity is notice their need. Mm. One of the sweetest things you can do if you're wanting to be generous for someone is start by noticing their need. The second thing is help them pursue their passion. Yes. So to the need thing, that's okay. Just watch. They have a need. That's right. Oh, they need help with the car. Right. They, right, right, you know, right, 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 they can't right. afford this. That's right. But also, uh -huh. it's not always hard times, quote unquote. That's right. So if, it, if there's not a, an overwhelming need, a fun thing to do is help them pursue one of their passions. Absolutely correct. Because when we're generous related to someone's passion, the statement we're saying is, here's how valuable you are to me. That's right. I see you. That's right. That's absolutely correct. I've said for years, lovers are learners. Yes, they are. And if I love you, yep. the extent to which I love you is the extent to which I will go to study you. Absolutely correct. And so if, if there's somebody running with me and, and went on an absolute hot streak this year, you go, here's how we're going to end the year. You're passionate about this. We're going to go do it together. This, everybody wants to run with people who see them. Yep. See when I'm in trouble yep. or struggling. Yep. But also see what I love. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And generosity doesn't just give what we want to give. Right. You know, that's that exactly used to be right. my thing. When that's I was younger, exactly right. I would just give whatever I wanted kind of to receive. That's right. And I, would, I learned it didn't land. That's right. Absolutely. That's correct. how I came to the yeah. either meet a need yep. or help pursue a passion. Yep. I learned that because I was given things I wanted that's and it right. never landed well. Yeah, it's good. That's really good. And they don't really see it as generosity if right. they don't want it. Right. Abs that's very you, true. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. But everybody, if they have a need, wants the need to be met. And everybody, if they have a passion, wants to be able to pursue their passion a little bit more. Absolutely correct. When you think about other things that you have consistently used in your repertoire of uh, not fighting fair, mm -hmm. another something that I think about, um, and this is a different side of generosity, but you are a coal heaper. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So before we move on from generosity, you have to talk a little bit about heaping burning uh -huh. coals. Uh-huh. Because I'm convinced no one taught me this more than you. <laughs> I mean, I've seen Robert do it for sure a lot. Yep. 
But I mean, I've been in the trench with you when you've done this <laughs> hundreds of times. So before we move on from general, talk about heaping burning coals. It makes me laugh almost maniacally, even <laughs> you bringing it up, because it's just been my cheat code, it right? Is. So Proverbs 25, uh, verses 21 and 22. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will heap burning coals yes, of shame will. on their heads and the Lord will reward you. Mm-hmm. Buddy, that is tatted and underlined you better believe in it that is. book. Okay. Now, why is this? Why do I laugh when you even bring this up? Because um, I remember being so deeply offended by a person that lied to me. Uh, that I was angry and my flesh was enraged and um uh Tim before Christ Timmy BC Timmy BC was ready and willing to let this individual know you mess with the wrong dude like that's I was just about to be like let me show you how Inglewood <laughs> handles such situations right <laughs> And obviously the Holy Spirit was like, yeah, no, nah, that's not happening. You got to die. And it, it was very difficult to do. I couldn't shake it. It was like, I'm, I'm incensed. And this person lied to my face in front of my superior. And no, he's not, I'm not going to let it ride. Like I know what scripture says. I'm not going to let it ride. <laughs> and I will repent later. And he's like, you're going to die. And I'm like, this is hard to do, sir. And he leads me to Proverbs 25 and I read it. Now I'm a literalist and I have a very vivid, <laughs> vivid imagination. imagination. And so I read <laughs> these two verses, prayers, and, you know, giving your enemies something to eat when they're hungry. Okay. Giving them something to drink when they're thirsty. Okay. You will keep hot coals on their heads and the Lord will reward you. I wasn't ready for that. And so I'm like, hold on real quick. Hold on. Are you telling me that in this situation, I can respond by doing something they wouldn't even expect me to do. It's one thing for you to do it and know like I'm being generous. Right. It's another thing for them to know there's no, why would you even do this? Right. Even as believers, mm -hmm. I, I know I crossed the line. Mm -hmm. And so I expect this action from you. If you give me something different, I'm right. going to be puzzled, right? So you, I can do something generous for somebody that is considered an enemy, either of, of mine or I am of theirs. And it will be like taking coals out of a hot barbecue pit and this is the way I imagined it in my head. Somebody had on a top hat with the with the <laughs> <laughs> with the top yeah, right. cut out of yep. it. And I just take like a shovel from like your 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 fireplace and scoop those hot coals onto <laughs> said scalp and hair. And they can't take the top hat off. So it's a chimney now, yep. right? It is burning their scalp. It is burning their hair. I mean, I hear sizzling, yeah. right? S You're telling me I can inflict third degree burns on a person's scalp in this way, a specific way you've chosen, and you'll reward me for it? It's a sweet smelling incense. <laughs> this burning scalp is a sweet smelling incense. It smells like the oxen that <laughs> Solomon decided to just chuck. By the thousand onto a crispy net. Okay, I'm doing it. And I won't tell, I will not say, I won't describe what the Lord told me to do because then this person will know. <laughs> that they were your me. laboratory. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> you bought that for me. So I wound up buying this person some very nice stuff and gave it to him the day after the lie. Because if it's one thing that I am, 
I am a quick study. Yeah. You are not going to wrestle me to the ground for four or five days, and I guess I'll do it. That dude hit me so quick. The next day, I went shopping, and I presented it to him, and we're still friends to this day. Still friends to this day. We were not friends then, by the way. But after that, the Lord did something, had already done something in my heart, but then did something in that person's heart. And we're still dear friends to this day. When you talk about, it won't take you four days. I just, I just heard the one liner, the obedient are expedient. That's how quickly it moves. That's you don't, stinky. don't wrestle with it. Okay. But can, can you not go fast? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> not be expedient. That's a full bar fam. <laughs> like just let me marinate on it, please. Before you dip. Thank you. That's a measure of <laughs> obedience that just says, okay, now, okay, now, now, right now, once the revelation hit you in your soul, it was, I'm not going to wait four months, yeah. you know, cause this guy, this person really makes me mad. Yeah. I'll, I'll apply it to the next go round. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll go buy it now. Yeah. I, I had a, um, employee. Uh, that I had to let go and on the way out the door, not physically, but in, in action. Um, he had such a poverty mindset that it was like he gathered everything he could on the way out the door mm. and walked out. And I let him. I didn't ask him to bring anything back. I'm like, I love you. Take your coals. <laughs> Take them with you. I'm not about to chase you down. But don't think it was a come up. Right. I live with my hands open. I'm not playing a tug of war. A laptop ain't gonna change nothing. If he get, if he gave me money for that one, he'll give me money for it. Like, it's, so I'd rather be defrauded than to go chase somebody down the street to sue him. To it don't it, no. Just if my father indeed owns all the cattle, a thousand hills on all the hills. This is light work. Whatever I think I lost, I'm going to get back. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to live my life white knuckling anything right. that God gives me or God gives me to give others because there's no strings attached. Anything that has a string attached becomes a puppet. Hmm. And I don't want to play the part of being a puppet master when I'm supposed to live with my hands open and allow the master to lead, guide, and direct whoever he will whenever he wants. I think it's one of the reasons why people like to run with generous people. It's not because of the stuff, but it's principle. If, it, if you'll be generous with me, you'll be generous with me. If, if you'll be generous with me, you'll be generous with me. All right. So I got to, I got to give you this story. So, um, uh, one of the thrills of my life as a lead pastor was when Sarah Benibo came on as our worship. Mm -hmm. I, her voice has strings to my tear ducts. When she leaves worship, I, I meet Jesus, point blank, period, every time, all day. And I remember uh, she got invited by Michael Bethany to come over and lead worship at Gateway around Christmas time. And I had this heart flutter moment where I was like, oh, Jesus. 
They're going to hear Sarah Bonibo sing and ask for her. The rich get richer. <laughs> they're going to try to take my ewe lamb. Right? Like, I was like, they're going to, how are they not going to ask for Sarah Bonibo after she sings? Right? And I remember after I had that little flutter and had that thought, my next statement to the Lord was, and I will let them have her. Mm hmm because she doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. She belongs to you. hundred percent. It's easy to say goodbye to stuff you don't want. <laughs> it's easy to say goodbye to a season that you fell out of love with. It is easy to turn the corner on stuff that you're already over. But when you love it and you can still keep your hand open. Yep. When you love the person and you can still keep your hand mm -hmm. on, when you can, when you love the ministry and you don't even do this to it, you don't yep. even claw it, you keep your hand flat. Like, it all belongs to him. It all belongs to him. But it would be impossible for me not to bring up what I, I and we couldn't have built anything without that we talk a lot about. Uh, and that's prayer. Mm. Mm -hmm. When I go back through all the different things, I'm even Freedom Church. Do you remember? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, like this, this is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you remember how many times you went and prayer walked? Absolutely. That school. Yes, I do remember. I mean, I guarantee you if we went back there, there is a track. <laughs> Big size nines are imprinted. It doesn't matter what God's asked us to build, prayer right. has always played an essential Absolutely role correct. in it. Absolutely. Because if it's worth doing, it's worth praying about. You better. And if it's not worth praying about, it's not worth being about. Absolutely correct. So when we, when you think back through God asking you to build certain things and then experiencing breakthroughs in prayer in the early days. I'm not just talking about now yeah, where sure. you knew he was teaching yeah. us. Yeah. I'm teaching you now yeah. how important, how essential a role pr prayer is going to play and does play yeah. not just in your life, yeah. but in this thing called your calling. Absolutely Everything correct. I ask you to build Absolutely must correct. be bathed in prayer. Facts. Before we started filming this, you yeah. were out there preaching I was right in there. That's exactly right. Praying. That's right. He's gotten us to a place where this is just. It's our normal. It, this it, is what we it's do. what we do. That's correct. So let's talk just for a little bit about prayer. Yep. And whether we're building a family, whether we'll, we're building a business. Yep. Uh, to me, one of the things I've learned, you can have the most gifting in the room and things be 10 times harder for you than the least gifted person in the room who's the most anointed. Mm. And one of the places that I feel the, the oil of heaven comes quickest is in the prayer closet. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So if God's asked me to do something, why would I just assume he and I would not consistently talk about it as I do it? Agreed. Absolutely agreed. B-side. Yep. For instance, <laughs> if anyone thinks. <laughs> you ain't got to finish the hey, sentence, twin. I go back to that launch night. Yep. Okay. That event. Yep. If people think you're this personality and you just show up and you flip a switch and you turn it. That thing, whether people realize it or not, was bathed in prayer. For months. Bathed. Yep. Even before you. I mean, Timmy, because without prayer, there is no oil on that at all. And I, I wonder, can you even imagine how much we would all pray more for whatever God's asked us to do? If God said to us, listen, I'm going to measure what is important to you in your life and therefore how I will help you with it based on how much you talk to me about it. How much more would we pray? How, how much more would we not start our day before a big business presentation? That part. Without asking the God of the universe. Absolutely. 
Not the CEO, yep. not my mentors, nope. the God of nope. the universe. Absolutely correct. Who can put words in a man or woman's mouth. Yep. Petitioning him. Yep. Anoint me. Give me the words. Yep. If I don't pray about it, I, I have learned this about me. If I'm not praying about something, I'm pretty sure God didn't ask me to do it. Because anything he, asks, anything he doesn't ask me to do, I can do without him. Absolutely correct. And the way I know I'm doing it without him is I don't talk to him about it. All right, so I want to, I wanna, uh, I, you're giving me some, some pretty clear pictures. And I, I want to dispel this notion that all prayer has to look like this intimate, time where you have a lot of bandwidth and a lot of free time to just, because as you were talking, I, I was visualizing my relationship with Juliet. I love Juliet a lot. I love our intimate times more than I love any other time, right? I love being intimate with my wife. But if that's the only time I communicate with my wife, mm. I am missing a lot of information about where she is. It's great. And she is missing a lot of information. It's great. About where I am. So in between those very special intimate moments, there are phone calls and text messages. That's right. And on her way to a Zoom call, I'm like, hey, hey, baby. Da, 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 da. So, so my intimate time with the Lord is, it's my favorite type mm -hmm. of time right. with the Lord. But it's not your only type of time. Because if it was, I'm missing a lot There's of information lot of info. that he wants to give me. And he's missing a lot. I'm missing out on giving him what's in my heart. So in the same way, we can go back and forth in a text message for 35 minutes with gifts and emojis and all this other stuff. Sometimes my day looks like that with the Lord Yep. where I'm hanging up one call great. and going, God, I have no idea what you're doing right now. Yep. But whatever that phone call just was and however that's supposed to look and whatever doors come from that, don't let me mess that up. In Jesus name, amen. All right. I need to be on with Nelson now. <laughs> we need to do a market meeting for Nelson. Okay, great. And what's after that? The exec team meeting. Father God, before I even get on this call with mm -hmm. this exec team meeting, mm -hmm. you know I don't know what I'm talking about. And we talking about investors and raising $5 million. And I don't even know how that's supposed to look. In Jesus' name, just make the crooked path straight. That's all I know. Hey, y'all. We good? Yeah. Uh, lead us into what we talking about today. All right. It has to be constant. That's pray without ceasing. It's not be intimate without ceasing. No. And listen, I'm, I'm all about the intimacy. We're all about the intimacy. <laughs> That's our, we love, I but want it. pray without, see, I, when you're with Jew in a public place, it's not like you can be, so it's just, hey, you go grab this, I'll go grab this. It, it's, we're not going to be intimate everywhere not, all the time. Can't be. In order to check all the boxes, we got to check, cover all the ground, we got to cover it's, it's going to be informational Absolutely. oftentimes. Absolutely. And I, there are times I'll be in very intimate times alone with the Lord. Then he'll start talking about something. I will actually leave my, my special space with the Lord. Come out, grab my laptop. Yep. He, there's so Clickety much information. <laughs> exactly. I leave the intimate because he's moved from intimate to informational. Yeah, absolutely. And I just start banging yeah. out. What I, what I hear. Absolutely. I don't do that in there. Yeah, I that's come out, exactly right. And that's in between calls, in between meetings, involving him. We have to. He had, because a lot of people see prayer as like, they only see it as a special moment that must be like carved out. Right. And they feel like if I miss that, I can't talk to him again right. until I get in the bed with him. Right. What? Right. What are we talking no. about? No. No, because if it was Juliet, Imagine in between every meeting, if you just shot her a text and said, just wrapped up, I just want you to know I love you. Booyah. A after, hey, I'm going into this next meeting. I already just know where you're going. Listen, it <laughs> just the next intimate time is just going to be through the roof. Here's why. Because the statement you're making is, I'm thinking about you. 
And you involve me in everything you're doing. You are on my mind right now. You don't think that intimacy is going to go through the roof? I bet you it does. I bet you it does. That's such a great point. I did not see you go in that direction. And, and it is so, there is intimate and then there is informal. That's right. And there has to be both for a strong relationship. There has to be. And the informal outweighs the intimate. I wish I could be intimate with Juliet as much as I am right. informal. Right. I physically couldn't take that. Right. And neither should, should That's right. Sh could That's she. That's right. We're not built to handle it. But those, but those informal moments heighten the intensity right. of our of very the intimacy. formal. Moments. Yeah. Yeah. And helping people see that. When, Cause when you say bathe in prayer, I just think a lot of people don't have yeah, yeah, yeah. practical. No synapses to we're not talking of, about hours and hours and hours and hours no, we're, talking we're talking about, about over sustained periods of time we're talking about over and over, over and months over. that's how, right how many text messages that's right have you sent your twin brother that's right how many text messages do you send your best friend yep. how many text messages have you sent your spouse how many text messages have you sent whatever right like that's what right they add up they add up I know how intimate we are based on the consistency of our communication. That's absolutely correct. Not based off of the intimacy of our That's communication. That's absolutely correct. You talk to you more than you talk to anyone. That's exactly right. I talk to Holly more than I talk to That's anyone. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly Just right. Just involving him That's right. in everything we do. That's right. So whether it's if, if you're a stay-at-home parent and you just, before you wake the kids up, mm -hmm. just a three, four sentence prayer. Yes. God has... As I go in to wake up my children, Holy Spirit, I pray you would. I, it does not have to he be hears a you. twelve minute he hears prayer. You. He hears you. It's both and. Yeah. He does hear and he responds. Yes, he does. And I'm just telling you, he loves to be involved in everything we do. That's why he went on record and said, "Talk to me without ceasing." Okay, now let me tie this prayer into heaping hot coals. Father, forgive them. Yay! For they know that what they do. He didn't intercede for them. He sent a text message. Ooh. while dying <laughs> in the middle of the murder he is praying for those that despitefully have used him and mistreated him that that if you want to know when do i start forgiving as the offense is happening that's where you get to and you can insert a prayer right there imagine jesus talking to his father when his father's not talking to him. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Crickets. Cool, you're not, you're not responding to me? I'm still going to talk to you. Still send this text. If you make your relationship contingent on him responding. Oh! You know how many times Juliet has been so busy and missed four phone calls from me? And three text messages and, and only to respond like, babe, I'm so sorry. I got caught up with the kids and da -da -da -da. Yep. my phone. I looked down, my phone was yep. on silent. I missed three calls. Baby, I'm so sorry. Girl, mm -hmm. I never thought our relationship was in trouble. <laughs> and notice I still kept texting. I, 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 I moved right along. I I'm still going right to keep along. sending you that text. I knew, I, I know you ain't dead, right? What, one of the questions we, we get asked a lot is, I, I, why is God silent? I just feel like God's not. What if there are times when God's silence is a test to see if we will respond mm. with silence? Will you keep talking? Even if you feel like I'm not. Jesus, Lord have mercy on my soul. <laughs> that, okay. That's nasty. <laughs> That's stinky. Sending a text in the middle of dying was pretty stinky. I mean, I'm just saying that's. Listen, if we're going to build something, I want to be like Noah. I don't, he didn't try and build his own thing. He petitioned the Lord. God gave him something. God told him exactly what he wanted built. He didn't do it by himself. I, I, and he never saw it. And he never saw it. Which means if you're building anything for God, it's based on what you heard and not what you 100%. saw. 100%. We walk by faith. Not by sight. Not by sight. 
And so that feeling should be normal. Absolutely but that's correct. Why we have to lean on him, rely on him. That's right. Anything he created us to do, that's he right. wants to do with that's us. That's with us. Absolutely. And thank God the Son of God went on record and said, Hey, I do want you to have clean hands and a pure heart. I want mm. you to be innocent as dove. Mm. But I also want you to know you don't have to fight fair at all. There's a serpent who is shrewd. Set a goal. Yeah. I want you to be even more shrewd yes. than he is. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so when we talk about generosity, we're not just going to be generous. Nope. We're going to be sacrificially mm -hmm. generous. When we talk about prayer, we're not just going to give him two minutes. We're going to give him eight, 10, 12, two minute segments, yeah, one minute segments, right. 30 minute segments at random times all throughout the day. That's right. Two sentence text, eight sentence text, one word text. We're going to involve him in everything we do. This, this is our key. If we are his children, father's greatest desire is not just that we would be successful. It's that we would involve him. That our children would involve us in everything they do. Well, I'm just telling you, I hope that you you got a couple of things out of this deal because whatever god created you to build uh it could take 40 years mm. or you can speed that thing up get mm. a little more shrewd mm. so don't here's the point just don't play fair period don't do it don't do it don't do it don't do it just playing fair is the slow way it is don't heap a coal it says it's coral plural plurality coals yes okay just get after it mm -hmm. and don't do it your way. Do it his way. And I love it that his way isn't just innocent. There's some shrewdness in it too. I want to pray over you and we'll wrap up our time. God, thank you for my twin. Lord, I thank you for what you're divinely enabling him to build. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, and giving, giving me and others a front row seat to watch him walk by faith. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless the B-side app. Lord, I pray that you'd give him and the team and new members of the team who you are leading. I pray you'd give them uh, your thoughts. Yes, Lord. And not just let them rely on their own thoughts. Yes, Lord. Lord I pray as he prepares to release the book after the first of the year. Lord, I, I pray for a, a divine microphone mm. to loudly declare your heart for your upside down kingdom. Yes, Lord. But Lord, I, I pray that over every single man, woman, and child watching this right now. Mm. I pray that you would divinely enable them. Every one of your children, Lord, is created to be a builder. We build your kingdom, and we all do it in a variety of ways. So God, I pray for new strategies yes, that are not theirs. Yes, Lord. And I don't mean just strategies to build. I mean strategies to be shrewd. Mm -hmm. I pray that you would give them a burden for the things we've talked about today, and then some, yeah, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. You are passionate about what you created them to build that you are not going to ask anyone else to build, whether it's a teenager, whether it's a product, whether it's a business, whether it's a marriage. You are passionate, God, about what you created them to build during their time on this earth. Spirit of the living God, I pray you would anoint them to do it. Do whatever must be done. Cut off whatever must be cut off. Yes, Lord. To make more room for your spirit and your oil. In Jesus' name. And God, I pray for Preston. Right now, I thank you for the assignment that you have given him in this valley. I thank you for the grace that you have given him to pastor into this new season as Pillar Church. And God, you know that I don't like rhymes that go with years. And yet you spoke it too loud for me to disobey saying it. So God, I thank you that for Pillar Church, 2024 is the year of more. He has chosen not to play fair. And 2024 is the year that you declare and display the more that comes with the way he's chosen to hit this floor. God, thank you for increase and influence. Thank you.
for increase in resources. Thank you for increase in the souls and the disciples that will come help to fulfill the vision that you have given him in this valley. People will move here from different states to help this man and this movement reach the potential that you've called it to reach. Not because of something he's done, but because of everything that you've said. So unlock it now. And for your glory, do it in a way that takes all of our breath away. All for your glory and none for our credit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you. I love you too. This is just too much fun. And you're, <laughs> you're getting in on this. This is our normal time together. We love you so much. And it's always such a pleasure to get to sit with you. Pray. We both pray the Holy Spirit speaks to you through this. Go get you some. Mm. Go get it. Let's giddy. And be shrewd while you do. Yay! See you next time.